You know what's fun? Cars. You know what else is even better about cars? That they can rewind VHS tapes. Welcome back to the Adam and Steve show. This is a ridiculous thing that I found at like a garage sale for like five bucks. It rewinds VHS tapes because I like collecting VHS tapes. But we're Adam and Steve. And that is... Ass. Adam Steve show. I'm Adam. And I'm Steve. And welcome back to our show. And... We're back to you pretty soon because we've been catching up on movies, especially myself. I've been trying to keep up on all the new movies coming out lately. And the first one that I've been really jumping into or really been wanting to talk about is this new Planet of the Apes movie. I saw it last Thursday, the first showing it came out at like four o'clock here in IMAX. Had to run out and see it. And I really, really enjoyed it. What do you think? So actually, it's funny that you bring it up because I have poured myself into the Planet of the Apes franchise as of late. So I had seen the Circus Trilogy, I had seen the Burton film, but I had not seen any of the original five, including obviously the uh, original 1968 Planet of the Apes. So I know everything about it. You know, we all know how that ends and everything, but going back and watching for the first time was really eye-opening and seeing, you know, just how the franchise has evolved, especially since like the originals are so you know, makeup based, you know, they're all in costumes and, you know, the makeup is super inspiring, especially for back then. And now it's completely changed this whole motion capture thing. So I have uh, all these thoughts about the entirety of the franchise. We could probably rank them later because have you seen all the movies? I haven't. I don't even know. I think I've seen the original one, but it's been a long time. So I'm not even confident to say that I remember any of it. So, yeah, the only ones I really remember are the Burton and the circus ones. So. I'm excited to check them out, though. If you're saying they're fun, I definitely want to see them. Oh, yeah. I mean, the original is obviously great and fantastic, super influential. So definitely watch that. But my personal favorite was Escape from the Planet of the Apes. That's the third movie in the series. I just think that it's, it's a complete inverse of the original film. Tonally, we go completely left turn. uh, And I think it's, um, you know, there's characters that we get to thrust into the spotlight that uh, we had grown to love from the first two movies and just seeing how the events of the second one, because the, the way the second one ends is like, so like what, where could you possibly go from here? So the fact that the third one was able to take the franchise in a direction and, and basically restart everything. And in such an interesting way is fantastic. So escape from the planet of the apes. I mean, you have to watch beneath as well to understand it. Uh, but and then conquest is good as well. But battles, all right. Uh, but I highly recommend those original movies because I, like I said, I'm, I'm at the point now where when me and Lauren are sitting out back, I'm like, hey, say n- name any double digit science fiction franchise, like a science fiction franchise with double digit entries, because Planet of the Apes goes bar for bar. I mean, like maybe Star Wars above it, sure. But like you know, I she said Harry Potter, and I was like, I'd go apes over Harry Potter, you know. So. Wonderful franchise. But yeah, to answer your question, I, of course, really, really, really enjoyed Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. I don't think that it's as good as any of the circus movies. I know a lot of people are really down on Rise. That's actually my personal favorite of the three. Um, It's a personal bias. Uh, I remember watching it when I was with my mom when I was 11 before I was really into film. Uh, But even going back, because I'm rewatching them all now, I'm almost done with War, showing them to Lauren for the first time. And uh, I I still find myself loving Rise, but this new one, uh, my only gripe is because it's a great time. Apes on horses, that's all I need. And I love Proximus. I love all these new characters, Raka, Noah. But the only problem is it's very familiar territory narratively. Like, um, you know, this dynamic, you know, this uh, s- situation setup I've seen before, especially after watching this is the 10th film in the franchise. So of course, we're going to get to that point. But I'm like, all right, can anything new happen? But uh, yeah, very, very good. I really liked it. How'd you feel? Yeah, very similar to how you're feeling. Cause like I wanted to give it that full five stars because I just loved it so much. But at the same time, while it does fall in the same tone as the last three movies, that last trilogy, it almost is don't sometimes too much familiar territory, like you're saying. It's almost like we could have experimented a little more and gone a little bit crazy. But I mean, there are some cool things narratively with the story that they're trying, and it's they set it far enough in the future where it's not just like picking up. We do pick up a little bit right away, but then we jump in the future a lot. So we get to see kind of 
where this world would have gone after Caesar has gone for so long. And it's really cool just to see how all that stuff's picking up now. And with all these new characters that we got, yeah, some of them kind of are similar to our last guys, but it also, like you were saying with all these new characters, like especially the, what is it? Proximus Caesar, whatever he was calling himself, Mm -hmm. that new villain is just very interesting. And the way they kind of ended things, you can definitely see that this is going to be like a bigger war coming and, it's even going to be like who's going to be on what side too because it kind of ended very roughly with the humans being upset and the apes kind of figuring out more about the past and knowing how they were treated in past worlds and things like that and it's kind of interesting just to see where they're going to take this story because there's a lot of interesting places where it can go but yeah this one kind of it's not my favorite of any of these but it kind of almost falls in the middle i would say Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. It's somewhere in that middle uh, realm. I also agree that I'm very excited going forward that we're not only getting two more of these, but five more of these because it could be another trilogy after this one. Excuse me. Uh, and if it's like different, like if we're like another, you know, thousands of years ahead of time, like that would be even cooler. Uh, but well, it depends how much you want to go with the timeline of the original films, because they do things that are kind of limiting to what you can really do with this, uh, you know, entire timeline here. But that being said, um, uh, yeah, give me a million of these. I'm really excited. There's certain characters that we're uncertain of their, I'm trying to not spoiler anything, but like there's certain characters whose fates are kind of up in the air at the moment. Yeah. And some of them I'm like, yeah, I'm cool if they're done. So, but other ones I'm like, like there's one in particular that I'm like, if if so and so is Dunzo, then I might be Dunzo. You know yeah. what I mean? Like uh, I, I'm sure you could assume who I'm talking about. You oh know? yeah, it's gonna be tough right out of that hole if you really want to go that direction. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, I think you know we've proven in these franchise films that like everyone comes back, and um, there's multiple characters who are Dunzo in a similar way, and so if certain characters can come back. And other characters can come back because how dangerous is that terrain that they are thrust into? They're really doing acrobatics here to not spoil it. Yeah. Anyone out there who hasn't run out to go see it the first weekend, definitely go as soon as you can. Just because these movies are just really fun to talk about, too. And kind mm. of just gush over the effects and how the motion capture it just keeps seeming to get better and better a lot of times. Like... You, you can tell some motions kind of feel human-like, but the actors also definitely probably go through the Andy Circus school of motion capture where he probably trains them to run like apes and stuff like that. So, And it was really fun, especially the new apes, just kind of seeing their camaraderie and things like that, too. Like, they definitely mm-hmm. were capturing that fun tone where some moments you can kind of see where they were trying to be a little bit funnier in this very, very serious movie a lot of times. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool to see how things are updated, especially since I'm going back and re-watching the Circus trilogy. Like, I forgot that in all of those movies, the apes aren't really speaking. Like, like all of them aren't speaking. There's several that do, but, like, the norm is still the sign language, right? Yeah. And here, you know, you have apes speaking to each other, and then... I love the Eagles. Like, what a cool way to, like, differentiate yourself. Like, yeah, we have this is a culture thing. It's a good world building thing. Like, yeah, this is what we do in our society. And it's a big part of who we are. And I also really like how my favorite thing about this entire franchise, uh, besides Proximus, Proximus is my favorite, like his delivery of uh, the what a wonderful day. And then the um, uh, uh, apes will learn. We will learn. I will learn. It's so freaking cool. But um, the my favorite thing about the franchise or this installment is just how things change over time, how things are reinterpreted and, you know, with whether it's history or religious stuff, you know, and like, for example, like apes stronger together. Well, I think it originally was ape, apes together stronger. And then now they're saying apes stronger together or vice versa. One of the two. And it's like, yeah, it's same, same, but different. But like, you know, how people today interpret Caesar. There's clearly different factions who interpret Caesar's events like very differently. You know, there's a moment where a firearm is um, is um, 
uh, unloaded during the movie, like goes off during the movie and all the characters are surprised. And I'm like, wait a minute, we know I, I have a very distinct mental I- image of Koba on a horse with two, you know, guns shooting them off. And at one time I'm like, we know about guns, but it's been 300 years. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's people today who don't believe that the Holocaust has happened. They think that's all that was less than a century ago. This is three centuries and they don't have like a lot of record keeping and like books are being discovered and whatnot. So like, you know, it's very clear that, um, you know, it's, it's easy for things to get uh, lost in translation. So seeing how that happens is really interesting to me. Yeah. They did a lot of really fun stuff with this movie. Like, like I said, they could have gone directly after the last trilogy, but I feel like it would have been, even more retreading. I'm happy they jumped in the future like this. And like you were saying, showing how time has passed and how these apes have adapted in a lot of different ways since Caesar's teachings. And a lot of his teachings may have been misinterpreted or kind of like reimagined over time. And kind of just like, as, as you were saying about the record keeping, probably a lot of the ways that he wanted things to go a lot of times probably have changed and a lot of different priorities change as the situation changes. So it's really interesting. And yeah, well, we're really excited to see where this thing goes. It's a four out of five now. Could it increase in time? Possibly. And could the next movie make this an even better beginning point? It's quite the possibility. And I'm very excited. I'm sad that it's going to probably be a few years till we know the next movie, but it kind of sucks. Cause I, I wasted a lot of time and never actually watched the, circus trilogy until all three of them are really available like i watched rise when it came out but the other two i never watched until like a couple of years ago but yeah i'm very excited to see where the story goes yeah just to get my ranking out of the way because i agree i'm at a four out of five i was oh i wanted to give it five out of five because i've only given one i think i've seen like 40 2024 movies now and i've only given one five out of five which was the only five out of five what's the great movie of the year Oh, it's Dune Part 2? Yeah, exactly. Dune Part 2 is the only 5 out of 5 I have. Challengers, I have Challengers above this movie as well. I do. Um, But then, yeah, Apes is my third, and then it's a pretty decent drop-off after that. I think Ricky Stanicki is next. Yeah, that pretty decent drop-off. But if I had to rank the Apes movies, all 10 of them, uh, you gotta gotta give it to the original. You know what I mean? I know I said I like Escape more, but like, the influence like it's so cool and it's just such a classic perfect like it feels the same guy who did the twilight zone and it feels just like that and i just think that it's like historically the most important and it is awesome so i would go one and i'll go a little quick through this uh planet apes one then give me rise dawn war escape conquest give me burton then give me beneath and then give me battle uh, or battle may be above beneath. I don't know. I think the burden ones are underrated. The effects in that are really awesome. Uh, but yeah, I, I get why people don't like it, but a great, great, great franchise. I'm so I uh, head over heels. I could rewatch them all right now, you know? Yeah. I definitely want to go and revisit, especially the Burton one too. Cause that's been a long time since I've watched that one too. And, Pop culture, I feel like, has kind of taken over the public opinion, and I kind of want to see it for myself. But, yeah, I don't think I've ever, especially the sequels, I know I haven't seen. So, it'll be interesting to go back and try to watch those for sure. But, yeah, right now, the ones I've seen, I would kind of put this. uh, So, my favorite is probably Dawn at the moment, and then Yeah, I just finished that. It's wonderful. Yeah, Dawn, Rise, Kingdom. And then War, probably. Oh, Kingdom Over War. Why is that? I don't know. I just felt like War wasn't as impactful as the other ones. I don't know. Like the concentration camp. Yeah, I don't know. (laughs) I'd have to watch it again to remember, (laughs) but it just felt like it wasn't as impactful. It kind of led up and then, I don't know. Yeah. Um, Well, yeah, I definitely recommend it. And it's funny you bring up the uh 2000 it was 2001 was when the burton one came out yeah which right around that time things there's been quite the reclamation of movies lately because we've had all of those uh spider-man movies being re-released tonight's tasm 2 and all the raimi movies are out and you know there's all this like reclamation of movies like uh (laughs) spider-man 3 which was previously like historically like oh that was a franchise killer awful movie razzie nominee 
now people are loving it. I've always loved it. I was eight when it came out. But another movie that came out right around Burton's movie, which is funny because I've heard all the conversation about Dawn and War, but no conversation about Burton's apes. But another movie came out a similar timeline in a similar genre that is also seems to be getting its amount of reclaim at the moment. Phantom Menace. We were both able to see this movie in theaters. How did you feel with this recent viewing uh, compared to how you usually feel? Did anything change? You know, I was really, really surprised. Just not even how much more I enjoyed it just seeing on the big screen, but how many people were actually at my screening because I didn't go see it on May the 4th. I had a ticket, but I actually saw it the day before instead because I had stuff going on May the 4th. But it was really interesting because I went at 11 a.m. on the 3rd and the theater was probably half full. And it was really interesting to see the variety of the crowd there. Like there was a dad taking his younger daughter to see it. Mm -hmm. And there were just a bunch of people closer to my age. And then there were people that were closer to like 60 plus that were in there too. Like it was quite the variety. But yeah, it was fun to see on the big screen. Never got a chance to see it because being born in 96, wasn't really in the theater in 99 too much. But I was born was, in 99, so I definitely wasn't there. Yeah, exactly. So to be able to experience that movie, I just feel like it was even more fun in that way, just because the movie has always been very critically panned. And honestly, by Star Wars fans in general, people just hate it so much. But I've always been a bit more of a fan, especially compared to episode two. I'm not a big that's one. That's actually my least favorite Star Wars movie other than the animated Clone Wars one. But. Yeah, I think this one to experience, especially like the Darth Maul scene in the big screen and the pod racing stuff. I just thought a lot of that stuff has aged fairly well. Like some of the digital reimaginings that George put in, I don't love as much. But to be able to see those big epic scenes on the big screen was a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. I love the Phantom Menace. I love Star Wars. I'm a homer. I'm so sorry. But so obviously I grew up with this movie. I've seen it a million times. I will see it a million times. And I had it last time I watched it two years ago. I had it at a five star. At some point I had dropped it down to four. I think with this recent viewing, I maintained it at a four. And it was less about my opinion changing with this movie because the only thing that I felt different from any other time I previously watched it is I laughed a lot more when Jar Jar did stuff. Like uh, I'm, I'm way past the whole like being upset about stuff like that and just I mean, I, not to give him too much credit, he does do the how rude line way like too many times. Like we have the same joke over and over again. Uh, well, yeah, but, and especially hearing George talk about it more, especially him talking about it being more geared for children and seeing that character and kind of understanding that more through an adult lens, mm -hmm. you kind of understand it more. But also having the experience of watching the Clone Wars TV show, what I have, and I really love that show. And Jar Jar has a lot more to do both in that and Star Wars Rebels. So you kind of see the character have a lot more serious moments and not as much being just annoying comedic relief. So having that context is a bit more fun too. But yeah, I can agree. I actually found myself laughing a few times and especially hearing the children also laughing at Jar Jar too, the little girl in front of me that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty fun too. Cause I was like, this is exactly what the character was intended for. So it just made it that much more enjoyable, I guess. Mm -hmm. the, the only other things I noticed this time, like for, for the first time was special effects stuff. Like there was no puppet Yoda. Uh, it was CG Yoda, which uh, that like, I like went like this, like, like I jerked in the movie and Lauren's like, what? And I'm like, I didn't say anything, but like, you know, uh, that bothered me. It was different because that's the only prequel movie where we get Puppet Yoda, you know, like yeah. why do you need to change that besides for like a co to make it more like, you know, fit together, I guess. But also I was in like the third row, which I like to be in because we have the recliners. So I get to like look up at it and the effects are, yeah, a little dated, but less so did I notice things about this viewing of Phantom Menace more so because previously this year I'd watched uh, New Hope, Empire, and uh, maybe maybe another one. I don't remember. But I was like, oh, I'll get through all the Star Wars movies this year. Not like all in a row or anything, you know, just eventually I'll get through all of them uh, in a rewatch. And I rewatched the Phantom, not the Phantom Menace. I rewatched Force Awakens less than a week after. And I've decided I like not only do I like Phantom Menace more than the Force Awakens, but I've decided I now like all of the prequels, which I previously only had uh, the Revenge of the Sith 
above uh, Force Awakens. And to defend why I made this decision, I just, you know, first of all, Force Awakens has not aged well. You know, all the member berry stuff is so like, ugh, like every movie's doing that now and it's so throw up. And, and it looks so real, which is nice. But like, there's something like escapist about the world that's built in The Phantom Menace, like so much more imaginative and new and different. And while the story, you know, rhymes, you know, famously rhymes with the original Star Wars trilogy, it does feel like its own thing. You know, we have original characters, but it's not like returning is this guy. He's back, everybody, but he's old now. Like, oh, he wants back. But like, he's you know, it's a different version of the character. It's a younger, you know, it's a different actor. So I just I think what do I like more? What do I appreciate more? What do I enjoy watching more? What do I think there's more value in? is the prequel trilogy. I still would take The Last Jedi over all the prequels, maybe not Revenge of the Sith, and then obviously Rise of Skywalker. That's my least favorite, this Rise of Skywalker. That or Rogue yeah. One. I'd say Rise of Skywalker and Attack of the Clones are probably fighting for my least favorite, but I can honestly tell you that even though I like Force Awakens, have I watched it in the last like five years? No. And I don't really feel like I need to just because it was kind of like you were saying very much just like pandering to being like, oh, remember this, remember this, remember. And it's like, yeah, I do. Can we just <laughs> move on? <laughs> mm-hmm. Tell the story of these new characters who I really kept wanting to hear stories about that we never really still after those three movies got to when it comes to like, um, I can't even think of his name right now. Finn and Finn. things like that. And even even more of Poe stuff. Like there's a lot of other stories that I would have liked to realize and even a more fleshed out Ray story without them kind of just like it almost felt like especially fucking Rise of Skywalker, just felt so rushed and just like we didn't really know what we we're gonna do here. So we're just gonna hurry up and write something because we gotta get this movie out in the next few weeks. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, the all the lack of planning of the sequel trilogy is the real problem. But yeah, I I just decided I the prequels are are so much more fun to watch. Like, I don't know. Don't get me wrong. Like Force Awakens is a very slick looking movie. And you got to remember, I watched this movie six times in theaters. Force Awakens. Like, I love this movie. I had it a five star. It was my favorite movie of 2015. It wouldn't be now, but it was. And now, like, this is the first time I was like, OK, you're down to a four because I got to put you below uh, Phantom Menace and everything. And so it was a big step for me, man. I'm I'm really I, I've I've talked about for years now I'm breaking up with Star Wars, and I still love it, and I will always love it. And I'll watch Force Awakens a million times and more in my life, but like I'm starting to acknowledge the chinks in the armor. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I might go through and rewatch them again too, because it kind of sounds fun. Because it's something I haven't done in a while, and kind of like you're saying, look at it with more of a critical eye and kind of decide because. You've always kind of had those rose-colored glasses because Star Wars is Star Wars, and you want to just love all of them, but they're not perfect movies, especially a few of them. So, yeah, I think it would be fun just to look back at them and kind of just give your honest opinion on them. Mm -hmm. Which, I don't know, I don't want to dislike it. (laughs) I mean, I still like it. It's four stars. Come on, we're not talking about shit now, you know? But, like... Yeah, it's just, you know, evolving, maturing, growing up. You know, there's still things for my child. Like, I love Cat in the Hat and Kangaroo Jack and all that shit, you know, and that's a lot less quality than Force Awakens. But, you know, it just doesn't do it for me the same way it used to. You know, oh, the, oh, that, what about that ship? Oh, it's garbage. Oh, the garbage will do. Oh, it's the Millennium Falcon. I remember that. You know, it's, there's good stuff, but. Yeah, yeah, back there's... to Phantom Menace though. It's um, it's a, there's a problem with Phantom Menace. There's a lot of problems with Phantom Menace, but it's fun. It's new. It's different. It's super ambitious. Uh, I George George, if you didn't want to be a director, why are you doing it? You know what I mean? Like if you don't like telling actors what to do and <laughs> all that stuff, then stop doing it, man. You know, produce them. Exactly. Yeah, it's a fun time, especially if you can. I think it's still playing in some theaters right now, too. And my drive in was actually playing the Phantom Menace, and I kind of wanted to go over there and watch it, but I didn't have time to. But if you can watch it in theaters, I think it's worth watching. And if, especially if you haven't revisited Phantom Menace in some time, mm-hmm. go watch it because I think you'll find yourself enjoying it a bit more than you last time did. Yeah, I added the song from the end of the movie, the, you know, the celebration on Naboo. Mm-hmm. I love that. And uh, there's just a, like, a lot of good aliens that are like iconic. So like Boss Nass and um, I really like uh, what's the name of the guy? Uh, Watto. 
um, yeah. who owns Anakin, and it's Sebulba. These are like very iconic, like you know, characters who stick with me. You know, and we love to talk about like, oh, do you even remember the main character? Like, who's the main character of Tron Legacy? Please regale me. Uh, I haven't seen character. Tron or Tron Legacy. <laughs> oh, well, exactly. You know what I mean? Like movies like that that people will still defend. I mean, with the new Tron right out, people are like, oh, Tron. But, um, you know, we no, need I mean, people, like this small little guy who just lost in the pod race. You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah, like you're saying with Phantom Menace, there's so much nostalgia there for me, too, because like Dueling Fates, the song that's playing when Maul's fighting both mm-hmm. uh, Qui-Gon and um, Obi-Wan. Obi-Wan. I used that in my little fan film that I made when we were in school, actually, called Kyle and Kylo. We used the Dueling Fates mm-hmm. as our song that. in it. <laughs> and it's just, that's one of my favorite songs in Star Wars, too. So it's being able to hear that in theaters and tapping my foot along to it. Like, it's just filling the nostalgic parts that, even though it's kind of cheap, it's fun to experience every now and then. <laughs> yeah, the score is great. It's still John Williams at the end of the day. Like, we oh, need yeah. to remember that while while these movies are, like, not good, historically not good you know there's still a lot of value in them and i think that uh the whole reclamation concept you know now oh we all love spider-man 3 now huh oh we all love you know whatever the hell uh, you know after all this time we've decided now it's good and i think it's a good thing and because a lot of these movies we think they're bad because of the expectation you know you go into the phantom menace well it's been uh, like so many years Excuse me, sorry. Since we've had a Star Wars movie, I have such huge expectations. The original trilogy is perfect. They have all this money, and you know, everyone wants to work on them. So, like, there's no excuses whatsoever, you know. Like, so, but now, years and years later, we're like, oh well. Instead of judging it for what it could have been or what I was expecting it to be, uh, you know, I've had enough time. You know, we as a society have had enough time to like embrace and accept what it is and enjoy it because at the end of the day you know movies are meant to be enjoyed and loved you know like it's fun to like trash on madam webb and stuff like that and i don't think madam webb will get reclaimed one day but like you know stuff like this where like sure there's deficiencies in it but there's a lot of good stuff in there and so i think it's great that like people can go back and if you want to hold tight and be like no like i'm a prude like no i it's still bad and, like that's your right dog but like who are you to like sit there and tell people now like, hey, stop deciding that you now appreciate the movie for the things it does right more so than hating it for the things it does wrong. You know, we oh, should yeah. hate things like it's innocent, you know? Yeah, no. And actually, I just looked at my letterbox diary right now in November of 2019. I rated Phantom Menace a two and a half stars. Mm. Still had a heart on it. Still liked it. But this last year and just a few days ago, three and a half. So I've definitely lightened up on it, and I think you might too. So definitely go check that out. But I just want to break some news to you right now. It just happened. Wait, there really? Is a, oh, this is exciting. It's not this movie news. Happened. It's not oh, movie no! news, but this 9-11 is, happened again. <laughs> no, this is this is some of the biggest <laughs> NFL news in history right now is being made because a quarterback is now the highest paid quarterback in history. In Lion history, with a 212 million no, contract, Jared no. Goff with a four year contract, 170 million guaranteed. Now, you're, you're, you're a fan, so I'll let you uh, react first. How do you feel about it? I am not, I'm not like pissed about it, but four years seems like a lot. <laughs> like, I don't know about a four year contract, but I don't. I think he's been getting better over the years. And I mean, he's proven that he can get him to the playoffs and everything. And he's honestly been to the Super Bowl before with the Rams. So I don't dislike Jared Goff at all, but I don't know if this amount of money and that many years was the correct move, but we'll see. The Lions have been making a lot of the right moves in the office lately, especially draft wise and stuff. Last year was Mm. great. This year was pretty good. I think they filled in a lot of spots that we needed, but I if Jared Goff does not take us far this year and continue to do so, it'll really tell what's going to be mm-hmm. our future anyway with that big of a contract. Yeah, in a world where Kirk Cousins is getting paid what he was getting paid by Atlanta, I guess it's not the worst deal in the world. I say no because 
Well, I don't know exactly what the details of the contract he, he's under now are. Uh, and like, you know, the vibes in Detroit are so good. And, you know, the, you know, the quarterback's the leader of the team. You don't really want to like mess with those vibes too heavily. Uh, and, you know, you're right. Jared Goff has done well before when he's proven um, when he's had a great coach uh, and great weapons and, great, you know what I mean? A good defense. But like, yeah, he needs everything. And I'm, I'm a Giants fan. So uh, Eli Manning, obviously, is the best quarterback we've had in the 21st century. And uh, he's similar. You know what I mean? He's not yeah. going to like rush you out of the pocket. Uh, he's not going to, you know be like the most elite quarterback. He's not going to win any MVPs or anything, but if you surround him with good complimentary pieces, he can get you, you know, to the big game and he can even win it. And he did it twice against the greatest coach and quarterback of all time, mind you. Uh, But yeah, the the Lions are so likable and Jared Goff's a good guy. Uh, You know, it doesn't upset me, but I feel like they could have gotten away with not paying him now, but Hey, yeah. I agree 100%, but yeah, I'm excited for him. I hope he does well, and I mean, if he goes out there and gets us a ring, then I will eat my words right now forever because there's nothing more I want in this world than Lion success. <laughs> mm-hmm. That was interesting. That was, that was crazy. I was like, it could be anything. It oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm kind I of getting this. Like... No, go ahead. Sorry? No, no. I don't even know who I thought you were going to say. I, I I don't know. Just Josh Allen got in his contract. Yeah, I, he had to have. Yeah. I, so I, I would don't know assume, who else yeah. could have possibly. He's the highest paid quarterback in Lions history, Josh Jerry that's, that's what it said, yeah. Wow. I mean, yeah, I guess that makes – oh, Stafford. They're telling Lion. me they didn't pay Stafford more? I mean, I guess money's gone up over time. Highest paid line in history. Wow. And you guys re-signed Amon Ra as well, and I think yep. there was another guy you guys re-signed – so, you know, I, I think if I was a Lions oh, right, fan right now, I'd feel great. You got to feel good about, like, you know, the vibes. You guys got the best vibes in all of football. Oh, yeah. re-signing, the re-signing the quarterback, the best wide, one of the best wide receivers in the league, one of the best linemen in Panay Sewell. Like, they're, they've got a lot of stuff that's really exciting, especially on that offense. So And they've drafted more for the defense, too, so. I'm very hopeful for this next season. It should be really interesting. But to get us a little bit more back on track, still in football, but a little bit more towards entertainment news. Did you watch the roast of Tom Brady on the 5th? I saw clips. I saw that Jeff Ross said a thing he was told not to say, and then Tom Brady said, hey, stop doing that. And oh, yeah, I saw Kim Kardashian got booed. Yeah, he said the thing about Roger Goodell getting into fucking getting in trouble for the massages, I think, and then Brady... Craft. Yeah, Robert with Kraft, Kraft yeah. 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 He didn't like that. <laughs> yeah, I think that was the thing he said like before, like, this is the one thing I don't want you to talk about. And then Jeff Ross, that's his thing. He like usually does oh, yeah. say the thing. I'm not a huge fan of these roasts. I like the clips afterwards. Like there's um there's an old one where Nick Kroll is like really digging into Seth Rogan and Ev- Evan Goldberg as well. And that's hilarious. Uh, but no, I didn't watch it. I heard that it, you know, the live thing was cool, but it did need to be edited down. You know, yeah, it definitely felt are usually edited. Felt far too long a bit. They could have caught a few people and been just fine. But overall, I did really enjoy it. I had a lot of fun with it. It definitely proves that Kevin Hart should not be an action star or doing any of these movies he should be kevin hart the funny guy because he was very funny on this no he was hilarious on the stand-up doing roasting people and just being funny him Mm -hmm. like the movie that he did on netflix whatever the plane one whatever what was it called i forget when he was being lift yeah lift horrible movie and this like watching this roast just further proved that like that's not what he needs to be doing he needs to be being kevin hart but mm. there was a lot of good writing in there that it was obviously they were there were people writing for people like Gronk and Tom Brady and stuff. But there were some really funny jokes in there. It's at some points it felt like there was almost like piling on to Gronk to the point where everyone was calling him stupid and he wasn't laughing anymore. And I just started to feel kind of bad for him. <laughs> mm-hmm. But overall, I actually. Guy. Yeah. And th- that's what it was like. They it wasn't. They never went too far and they were making jokes about like Julian Edelman basically like being gay for Tom Brady and stuff. And Mm -hmm. there was a lot of funny jokes in there. And overall, I think it was pretty good. But yeah, it definitely should have been edited down a bit. (laughs) Yeah, I I probably wouldn't go and watch the entire thing. My dad watched it. 
Uh, but no, I, I it's just not my thing. But I'll watch clips, and I thought some of the clips were fun. Like Bill Belichick, his thing was funny. Nikki uh, Glazer but- was actually probably the funniest on the roast. I can't remember any specific joke she did, but I just remember that night being like, yeah, she won. Well, then everyone being like, oh, uh, stop making fun of Aaron Hernandez and stop making fun of Tom Brady's wife. It's like that. Th- this is the territory that comes with that. Like, this, yeah, that's sorry. what roasts kind of are. <laughs> And yeah, especially like, well, Aaron Hernandez's wife was like, oh, my kids have to live in such a cruel world. And it's like, I mean, your husband killed someone. But yeah, I'm sympathetic, <laughs> you know, like they don't deserve to have it be piled on. Uh, but that's the territory, you know, and then uh, his wife as well. Like, I don't know a lot about what, the, what went down there, but apparently like she cheated on him. So it's like, yeah, they kept making jokes about that. She told her to like sign up for like. I can't remember if it was like Taekwondo or like some martial art class or something. And then she ended up cheating on him with the teacher or whatever of the class. Yeah. And people so, were like making jokes about that. And I was like, I don't even know if that's really specifically what happened or what, but it was just weird. Yeah. yeah and then when Kim Kardashian and boot, it's like, oh no, and, you know, not, not to like take us to another thing, but uh, have you been following the Kendrick and Drake uh, stuff? Not fully. I know a little bit of like the overall arching parts, but I haven't actually listened to like the songs mm-hmm. fully. I, I've been kind of a hater with this whole thing because all my friends are really interested in it and I just don't care. Uh, to me, to me, who wins is I have like five Kendrick songs on my Spotify. I have like at least a dozen Drake songs. So to me, I know Drake's like losing heavily, but like... Pfft. You ask me who I like more, it's Drake. Do I condone any of the bad things he's doing? No. Do I feel bad for the millionaire? Like, millionaire versus millionaire, which one are you going to pick? Like, all these people, especially at the roast, all these people with millions of dollars, like, oh, boo-hoo, someone said a mean joke about me. Like, it doesn't mean much to me. Yeah. Well, let's get back into movies and speaking of rich people doing rich people things, let's talk about the fall guy. Rich people pretending to be stunt people. So how are we mm. feeling about the fall guy? I personally really enjoyed it. I feel like, and surprisingly with that Rotten Tomatoes score, I thought I was going to be in the minority, but it doesn't seem that way. What's your rating? I know we I, until the end, but I jumped out at a five out of five right when I saw it, but I actually moved down to a four and a half, mm-hmm. just because I don't I don't know if I love it as much as say Doom Part Two or even Challengers, who I, those I both have at fives right now. So I bumped it back down, but I really, really enjoyed myself. Mm -hmm. I'm at a really low four. Like I wanted to give it a three, but I think this movie is just so perfectly calculated. Like it's not an original movie, but your average Joe thinks it's an original movie. There's no number in the title. So it gets like, oh, there's no original summer blockbusters. Excuse me. Here's one. Well, you know, and then Ryan Gosling and Emma, Emily Blunt on opposite sides of Barbenheimer, you know, they're like super hot right now. And then the movie gets like, it gets credit from cinephiles like us because, Oh, well it has, you know, stunt. It's about stunt man. You know, we've been talking for years about, Oh, they need to add a stunt category to the Oscars. Oh, Tom Cruise and the mission impossible movies and even jackass. And, and, you know, so it's really sympathetic movie because it's clearly showing so much love to a downtrodden like minority in the film industry. And um, it's also like, you know, it's an action comedy, but it's also a romance. Like, I recommend it to my parents to go for like a date night, you know? So I just feel like it's trying so hard to be so broad. And so it just kind of means very little to me. I get what you're saying there for sure. It's definitely a movie that you could, I can see being a TNT afternoon movie that they air every weekend yeah. and people would love it. And, yeah. and honestly, including myself, I'm the guy who, whenever I see Con Air on TNT, I sit my ass down and I watch it just because it's such a silly, ridiculous movie. But it also plays to my heart because I am that person who is always talking about stunts and how much I love them in movies and things <laughs> like that. So it's speaking to me on that level, as well as if you're someone who, is into film there's so much behind the scenes lingo and stuff that they go into that was very reminiscent of things that we learned at film school and things like that so it was fun to kind of hear all that jargon and whatnot so it's definitely playing to people who love film and also just love stunt communities in general and i mean it was fun to see in the credits they even show like the behind the scenes of the stunts that they're doing in the stuntman movie very meta but 
it was a lot of fun for me. I can definitely see how some people might not love it as much. It's very, I think it's based off of like an old 60s TV show, I believe. Yeah. Not really familiar with it. So I think Mission Impossible is too. That's something I learned very recently. But yeah, I it's... It's new enough, I guess, that you could almost consider it original just because I have no idea what that original show was really about. But I'm a big Ryan Gosling guy and just seeing him be charming as ever, being funny and doing these fun little action moments with stunt people. And I think his chemistry with Emily Blunt was very good, too. But yeah, overall, it's it's definitely not like the best movie of the year. But if you're a fan of like just fun action comedies, it checks all the boxes. Yeah, exactly. I like I positively rated it. I gave it a four out of five. Like, I think it's a good movie. I just nothing I'm going to write home about. I think I put it just ahead of Monkey Man, but just below Driveway Dolls. On my rating, it's not going to last in my ranking for very long at all. I think it's already like eight. I think I only have like, yeah, like half a dozen like four star movies anyway. So I, I don't know. I'm just, I seem so negative about it. It's a good movie. It's cute. The romance is cute. You know, David Leach is a competent director. I like the whole Aaron Taylor Johnson. You know, he's doing like a Matthew McConaughey type thing. And uh, I, I mean, it was predictable. I knew immediately oh, yeah. what the twist was going to be right away. And then I felt like the third act went on a little bit too long. Uh, but the third act is the best part. I just was like shocked that it kept going for as long yeah. as it did. You know, 20 minutes shorter and this movie would have been even better. Yeah, I, you know, it's 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 cute. It's sad that it's not getting the box office it deserves, but. You know, it's uh, it's getting a good critic score and, you know, it's a win in that regard. So and it's not doing terrible. You know, it's already made 50 million domestically. Like, it's not like it's a dead in the water. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. And speaking of the fall guy, do you want to jump into the the ass update? Oh, yes. So ass anticipation game. I love our name of our yeah. show ass. Every time I tell someone that's the name, I, I get so happy in my soul. Uh, let's see here. So the fall guy is at an 82 percent on Rotten Tomatoes currently, uh, but is only at 49 million domestically. It has a long way to go. It's a whole summer of stuff. So we'll see what happens here. But, you know, there's totally people who are like, oh, well, I haven't seen all the apes movies or the Mad Max movies. Uh, and then I'm too old for if for Garfield you know, and, you know, Stranger Sucks, and I don't even know who Amy Winehouse is, you know, so, oh, okay, I'm going to go see The Fall Guy, though. I'm yeah, It doesn't have a number attached. You know, Ryan Gosling's cool. Emily Blunt's hot. Yeah, let's go see it together, you know, and, and I think it's so broad. It's so big that, you know, I, I think it will. I might make that 100 million domestically. I'm, I'm wishful thinking. It was my last pick. Uh, but it was either The Fall Guy or Argyle, I remember. So I yeah. think I made the right call. Uh, but 82%, so I might lose that one out. Uh, I will say that Kung Fu Panda 4, we have not made this update yet, is officially, it grossed $100 million domestically, and with a 72% on Rotten Tomatoes, that means I have 72 points. Add that to the 92 that I had from Dune Part 2. Uh, and then Apes, I think it did like 50-something opening weekend, and yep. if it continues on this track, it will definitely make $100 million domestically, which means 80 points will be added as 80% on Rotten Tomatoes. Other updates, Ballerina. I don't think Ballerina is coming out this year. I think it's coming out next year now. So I think I lose that one, which stinks. Um, you know, Mean Girls, we already established, did not make it. Um, but Mufasa, the trailer just came out for that. And it looks like the the last movie, which is not good. <laughs> um, and then any other updates for you include the fact that. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Apes is at 58.5, by the way. 58.5. Oh, uh, box office. I was yeah. like, what? 58.5 million. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it's definitely going to be a close, close match. I, I, I clearly have a couple things that probably or might not make the threshold, but you're still trying to get on the board here. So I got a decent lead, but July will be good to you with Deadpool three and um, twisters. And then I think June uh, as yeah. well with uh, inside out two. You know, just later in the summer is going to be where you shine. Yep. And definitely November. You own November 
as well with a Wicked Gladiator and uh, I think even Beetlejuice is in that area. September, I think it's Beetlejuice, yeah. Yeah, so very exciting. Currently the score, what, 92 plus 72 is blah, 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 164. I have 164 points out of uh, the possible four movies that have gone by. You have zero out of the possible one. So we'll see what happens, right? Exactly. Uh, well, but the next one we can jump into, I'll let you, dealer's choice. We got the vampire girl or we got the muscle girl. Uh, give me vampire girl. I know you're a huge fan of the Saw, uh, Spire, Scream, the Scream movies, the last two. I'm not. Uh, I think the first, like the fifth Scream is good. And then I think the next one's like fine. They did Ready uh, so. or Not as well, I think. Yeah, and this movie's kind of making me doubt whether or not I even like that at this point. <laughs> uh, because Abigail, I, I was really hyped for it when we worked in the trailer a while back, and I was really hyped for it. And, you know, it's fun. You know, oh, it's a ballerina girl, but she's a vampire, and it's silly and fun. Uh, but, yeah, I think it's a little too long. I, I think I don't care much as much about Melissa Barrera as uh, other final girls of similar ilk. I do appreciate how we get to know everyone a lot better. Like, in like, this, I feel like I know everyone involved in this situation. Uh, standout is definitely buff Elon Musk, who also plays Proximus, what, Kevin Durand? Yeah. Uh, and then uh, even, like, I don't like Catherine Newton, but in the limited capacity that she's in in this movie, I think she's much more suited for that than leading an entire thing, you know? Yeah, and rest in peace to Angus Cloud. I thought his character was even fun in there, too. It's kind of like just this kind of aloof guy who you wouldn't really expect to almost be involved in a heist like this on this caliber but you can tell that he's kind of just kept in the the dark as much as possible like he's just the wheel man <laughs> yeah yeah that's it's it's a real shame uh the, the loss of life there but um i will say dan stevens stole this movie he is so Absolutely. cool i just did the guest he is so cool i i love him but yeah, I'm at like a three out of five. There's a lot of uh, gore and blood, which is fun. Uh, but, you know, it's one that I might buy on Blu-ray and I don't know if I'll ever watch it again. But yeah, I, enjoyed myself. I, I think it was a fun take on vampire movies. It's nothing reinventing the wheel or anything, but doing the whole like, oh, they're doing this heist thing and then the heist gets foiled very quickly. And then we kind of see I, the one thing my major complaint about this movie is the trailers, I feel like they could have sold it in a better way where they wouldn't reveal that fun aspect of it. I don't know. I feel like the trailers could have been cut differently or something or they wouldn't reveal pretty much everything right away. Because that's the one thing that this movie, I feel like, was the major sin of it is similar to a lot of other films that have come out in the last 10 plus years. All of the best parts we saw, especially if you're going to the theater as often as we do, we see these movies almost before we ever see them because the trailers are cut so much to like, especially when I see like an ending shot in a trailer and then I find that it's the ending shot in the movie. It makes me so mad because mm. it just makes me sad. So I'm like, I want to experience this movie. And if I would have known, if I wouldn't have known that, I guess if you haven't watched the trailer, spoiler, the little girl is a vampire. That's the whole thing of the movie. But I feel like if you would have just kind of almost sold it as a heist movie with Dan Stevens, and then the kind of like tease the horror, I feel like it would have like crossed over and maybe just a little bit better to me and personally, but I get, you got to sell the movie to the masses, but it just made me sad. <laughs> yeah. I, I will say that's one thing that is cool. Like if there's any bright spot out of the scream sequels trilogy, that seems to be like we're getting here uh, is that these guys, you know, have some box office pedigree and have earned the right to do an original project like big studio film like this and because of that yeah you just with this kind of a budget and cast and you know the studio and whatnot you can't just sell this you know small i agree it would be better to just go into this blind and not know anything and you know it turns out there's a vampire girl that's awesome like this movie's gonna play really well uh like decades from now you know like yeah, a decade I... later it's gonna be like whoa this was like crazy i mean i guess you know it's centered around the little girl it's called abigail you know yeah, if you sold it more as like a heist movie and kind of hid the horror, 
I feel like it would just be that much more impactful. But I even like to give it even more props. The little girl who played Abigail, I think she also Matilda. played. Matilda. Yeah, I was saying Matilda on the Netflix musical. And I was like, she was fantastic in that. And I really liked her in this, too. So very curious to see where her career takes her, because especially with her getting into horror a bit more, I would love to see her in more stuff like this. Yeah, I, I think she did a great job. Uh, yeah, I don't have any like huge uh, complaints about it. I just thought that like, I don't know, I, none of the t- twists, uh, twists and turns did much for me. And um, yeah, some of the cast is a little wasted. And like by the end of the movie, I'm just like, OK, this kind of feels like an amalgamation of things I've seen before. But um, yeah, I'm very uninspired by it. But good movie. Really good. Like one of the better three star movies. I wanted to give it a four. I was way closer to a four than a two. Yeah, I think I put it to the four, especially just because Dan Stevens just really made the movie for me. I can agree. Miss Melissa Barrera, she's she's good in it, but I just feel like her character could have been a bit more rather than just being a recovering drug addict, because that's kind of been done in horror quite a bit. But I don't know. It's still good, in my opinion. But there's a lot of parts where I feel like it could have been a little bit stronger for sure. Well, I just hope that her going forward, get out of the scream queen thing. Like you've done three in a row now where you're the scream queen. You you did uh what's it called? There was a very popular musical in the Heights that was really great. Uh, but she's obviously like an accessory piece in that. So I would love to see her go do something now that's kind of uh, completely different. Do a comedy, like do a romance, you know, do anything else, you know, try switching it up, you know. Absolutely. And speaking of strong, let's jump over to the muscle lady and the other girl who looks like Theo Vaughn. Love Lies Bleeding. How do we feel about it? I went into it only knowing about the muscle lady, and I was quite surprised where this movie goes. <laughs> okay, I knew zero. I didn't yeah. see a trailer. I didn't know it was about a buff lady. I mean, I guess I saw the poster. I, I, was say, like... I saw the poster, and that was about the extent of it. I kind of stayed away from the trailers on purpose. Yeah, I, this is actually, I told you earlier that this is the last three-star movie on my top 10 list. And I really like how stylistic it is. I really love Kristen Stewart. I think uh, my biggest takeaway, by the way, is, you know, every year there's like uh, uh, like uh, sister movies, like twin movies, like Bugs Life and Ants come out in the same year. Mm-hmm. Uh, I feel that way about this and uh, Driveway Dolls. You know, two movies about a couple, like a, a lesbian couple who get mixed up in some kind of, you know, comedic murder mystery, but it's a little dark. And, you know, there's, uh, you know, like the same same type of vibe, you know what I mean? So what a good year for, you know, lesbians in film, I would say. And we, we've just started here. But uh, I prefer driveway dolls for sure. But this one, you know, Chris, like I said, Crystal Stewart's awesome. Yeah. Uh, the newcomer, well, I don't know who played the buff girl, but she's awesome too. I like um, Ed Harris. I like, uh, oh, what's his name? Dave Franco. He's good in this uh, as well. Katie O'Brien is the other girl's name. Yeah, I saw that literally the tweet where she like was like advocating for being in this movie. So, you know, it's cool to see stuff like that come to fruition. Uh, yeah, I got some She-Hulk vibes from this movie especially at the end yeah uh i love the music the score like that song at the very end i I love i've been listening to it a lot so i'm a big fan how'd you like it oh yeah i i was quite surprised where it went but i'm a big fan of like i don't without spoiling surrealistic moments and kind of like surrealistic imagery and whatnot and this movie similar to i think this director also directed a horror movie a few years ago called saint Maud, and that also has some surrealistic imagery in it too i think it's leaning into more witchy stuff mm-hmm. I haven't but seen it. it's very it, i would highly recommend it i think it's it's just a very different but interesting movie that's all i can say but mm-hmm. yeah this movie they take a lot of different stylistic approaches that i Especially when the movie starts, you don't expect where it goes. Like you were saying, toward the end, it gets pretty out there and crazy. But it's it's a very interesting love story. And then it turns into an almost like crime drama thriller in a way. And it takes a lot of turns. And the cast is certainly what makes this even better. Because like you were saying, Kristen Stewart, this is probably her best role in a long time, in my opinion. Like she commits to it and it just fit her kind of like personality. Like she's very kind of like mellow, but 
has very passionate moments, especially when she's falling in love with this girl who she's never mm-hmm. met before, just randomly. And it all feels very genuine. And like, yeah, you were saying Dave Franco. And I had no idea Ed Harris was in this movie until I saw him. And I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> Mm. And his little wig that he had was hilarious. But the time period and everything, I didn't know it was a period piece either until I got in there. And it was just everything together. This movie was very unique, but cool. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff about like the Reagan administration and about like uh, addiction. The movie's about addiction. Uh, I to speak about what you said about Kristen Stewart. It was really funny whenever she would like rage out. Uh, so I enjoyed that. The, but, the ongoing and, cigarette bit that she had of her trying not to smoke and everything. And even into the credits when she starts, she's like, it's pulling out a cigarette again. It's like that whole ongoing bit was just hilarious in this very serious, but also dark comedy. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I really enjoy it. It's one thing that's a weird thing to note, but this movie is heavily uh, big on its sex appeal. I don't find uh, buff women sexy too much. You know, she looks great. She looks like she's doing awesome. She's not my thing. So I wasn't like, you know, oh, like challengers, like obviously like Zendaya, I find her much more attractive. But like, like, I'm not like making it a sexual thing when it's not. This is very clearly like a sexual oh, no. type movie, you know, like I have a lot of people who liked it because of the sexual aspects. It is quite the horny movie for sure, but. It has a lot to offer in different ways as well. But yeah, it's Mm -hmm. it is quite unique in its style is the thing I really just want to harp on, like go into it because I feel like some people, once they see stuff getting very surrealistic, they could check out very quickly. But hang on, because I think you would really enjoy (laughs) it by the end. (laughs) Yeah, I gave it like a three and closer to a four than a two. I almost but, gave it a five right out the gate, but I gave it a four, but I really, really enjoyed it. Like, I think it's, is it in my top five right now? I have. So if you haven't looked on my letterbox, actually in my, I'm keeping stuff listed. So I have a power ranking too, like you have, but I'm, I'm like trying to keep everything logged, but currently I have it at my number four spot. I actually on rewatching late night with the devil. I moved that up to three. Hmm. Yeah, but I got yeah. a year pulled up. I like the poster you chose, too. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, we have a very similar top 10. Sasquatch Sunset just missed. Yeah. I That movie is just the style of it just made me so happy that I was like, it has to be above a lot of these because it's so cool. Yeah, I'm going to watch that Irish Wish. It looks terrible, but I will oh, watch it's, it. It's complete garbage, but go ahead. Yeah, that's awesome, though. Yeah, we have very similar things going on. Yeah, if I included Late Night with the Devil, it would similarly be up at that range. Uh, but yeah, oh, we're yeah. like almost identical with the 10 movies in our top 10. The only thing I have that you don't that's not in your top 10 is like nothing. Yeah, we're pretty strong. I mean, I haven't seen Ricky Stenicki still, but I need to. Ricky Stenicki is so much fun. I know uh, I love it just because I'm a huge John Cena guy, too. Uh, just to touch on some other 2024 things real quick. Uh, I saw I saw the TV glow. Uh, this movie has a lot of hype. I didn't see the last movie that this director had done. I think she made like something I with the fair uh, last day at the fair or something like that. I, I don't I know. That. But it's got the guy from uh, Detective Pikachu in Jurassic World Falling Kingdom oh. uh, in it. Uh, it's uh, about like, like he falls <laughs> in love with like a TV show in his youth and sees himself in it and the people that he comes close to because of their shared love for this show. And um, yeah, it's a very surreal, weird movie. Like it's like a uh, scary, but it's not like you just have this uneasy feeling throughout. And I, you know, it's a very much so about like, um, uh, I didn't get any, well, no, not that I didn't get any of the trans um, metaphors going on, but I still, I mean, I'm not trans. I felt like it was very relatable you know, I, I I remember being younger and being really into shows just because people that I wanted to be friends with that were a little older than me were into it. And, you know, I, I identified with it really well. And then looking back and being like, oh, oh, this this isn't as cool as I thought it was back in the day kind of a thing, you know? Yeah. Uh, but I recommend that. Is that on your radar? I've I've heard of it and I've seen it pop up with people rating it on Letterboxd, but it hasn't popped up anywhere near me yet. Yeah. So there's that for me. Uh, to do to do anything from this. Oh, yeah. The idea of you. I'll recommend this to you for sure. 
Uh, I gave it three stars. It's closer to a four than a two, maybe. Uh, and I, I, it's Anne Hathaway and the Noah Bacatze from the Royal, Red, White, and Royal Blue. He's also the guy in uh, uh, Bottoms. Uh, this yeah. is like a, your typical like romance. It's kind of like Amazon loves doing these like thirst trap movies where it's like, you know, oh, we have one celebrity and it's very sexy. And, um, you know, it's like your I, it's like mom fan fiction. You know what say, I mean? I feel like it was based off of a fan fiction or something or something of that nature. I felt like because well, I felt like it was it's getting like hyped. 50 shades of grayish, you know? Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah, I think it's in the same I, type of vein. Yeah, like a mom gets dragged to go to a concert or festival for with her daughter and her friends, and she accidentally meets the the lead singer of this boy band that her daughter is outgrown, and he like is hitting on her. She's obviously like you know kind of interested, but like trying to hold back because he's like younger significantly. But it's fucking Anne Hathaway. Uh, but um, what's it called? It's it's you know. It's not as sexy as you'd want it to be. It's sexy enough. I mean, it's Anne Hathaway, but like, uh, I recommend it. It's a little too long, but it's it's cute. It's sweet. You know what I mean? Yeah. I too can play at that game. Give me a second. <laughs> but yeah, I need to get some more 2023, 2024 movies in. <gasps> you got puppers. Look. We got our puppers here today. Fun. Can you see the puppers? Fun. Look at the puppers. Look right there. Right there on the screen. It's another puppers. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's it for 2024 movies that uh oh, Unfrosted. Are you gonna watch that? The Pop Tart movie? I have not watched it yet. I might, just out of curiosity. All right, you can go. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really bad. I hated it. Uh it's kind of just a bunch of like breakfast jokes and like whose idea was it to put fucking Melissa McCarthy and Amy Schumer in a movie together? And then everyone doesn't like jerry seinfeld these days so like you know it's just you know it's getting the worst press you could imagine you know yeah and i mean i feel like jerry even said i feel like he said something about movies recently and then that movie came out and it's just like what the hell are you talking about he said something about like movies are dead or something uh yeah he he well he's like oh yeah i try to do comedy the cancel culture thing the comedy blah 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 blah, blah and it's like everybody in know, comedy he, hates him though too that's why it's funny <laughs> Well, yeah, and then you got all the what, the stuff when he was dating a 17-year-old is, is resurfaced. And then, you know, obviously, well, he's Jewish. So, like, you know, all the Israel-Palestine stuff, like people, you know, Palestine supporters were, like, walking out of his, like, uh, he made a speech at a graduation, and they didn't like that, so they left. Uh, so he's, he's just, you know, not on top of the world. And then, obviously, Curb Your Enthusiasm is still remaining, like, I mean, it's in the final season, right? It just ended or whatever, but, like, you know, Clearly, Larry David is was the, you know, yeah. dominating creative force in that show. I mean, I know they continued without him. They didn't finish it with him. But. Well, that and I'm pretty sure I haven't watched all of Seinfeld, but I hear a lot of people always say that it fell off when he left, too. So I guess that kind of speaking mm-hmm. more and more to the fact that Mary, maybe Jerry Seinfeld wasn't the best. <laughs> yeah. So um, but yeah, I didn't I didn't like uh, that. Uh, other movies, just to point out, because we're doing each other's voodoos. Um, so. Uh, just to like speed through them, uh, True Romance thought it was very good. It was uh, another one of those like natural born killers where it was like uh, Tarantino light, you know, like, oh, mm-hmm. we have Tarantino at home, you know, and this is well, Tarantino. Yeah, home. it was the scripts that he wrote that he would nobody would actually let him actually make. So <laughs> they're like, we're going to take this and make it ourselves. Yeah, but I, I like it. Um, I thought it was very good. Scary Movie 4 sucks. It's like one of the worst things I've ever seen. You know, uh, Hot- I like scary movie four but i mostly like the first five minutes of scary movie four and that's why i like it i think yeah i mean when when aaron anna ferris gets hit in the head oh my god i'm in stitches no. when Shaq and dr phil are locked up <laughs> no, in the I'm saw traps <laughs> no i know that that was like uh one of the more notable parts of the movie but i'm just saying in general with these like oh, yeah. i like the first one a lot but the second one people like that and i'm even like Ugh. And then I watched the third and the fourth on your voodoo. Yeah. And the third sucks too. I just saw a lot of M night influences. You know what I mean? Yeah. The second one, probably my favorite still, but the first two were really the funniest ones just because of the Wayne's brothers were the ones actually writing those. And then once it got to like David Zucker and all that kind of shit, they fell off hard for three and four and don't even watch five 
really don't I've watch. Dad, Fox. I've seen it in the theater when I was a kid. <laughs> Ashley Tisdale. Yeah, I, um, I've watched it once and I rented it on DVD. And I think I don't even know if I actually finished it before. I was like, Mom, just take it back. I was like, I don't want to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, th- these are just not they're for 12 year olds. I feel like uh, no offense, but I don't know. I just feel like my uh, the humor is, is just way too. Dumb. It's hard to go back and watch comedies, especially that were specifically made for parody in that time period, because like when those movies came out, they were a lot funnier. But going back and watching them 10 plus years later, if you're not watching it in that lens, it's very hard to get through. <laughs> mm. Yeah, and it just seems like a lot of reference humor. Like, oh, yeah. remember this? Remember that? Uh, Hot Tub Time Machine 2, that kind of blew as well. Yes. It's better than the other two, but than the last two I just said, but it still blows. It's not your voodoo, but Murder Mystery, both of them, ass. I hate Adam Sandler. I hate him uh, ass. Um, what else? Do, 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 do. It's just from your voodoo, The Guilt Trip. It's fine. That's like it, a mom movie. Um, like me and my mom would watch that and be like, that's so us. Um, did you do Stuber? Super disappointed in that. I like both those guys. Didn't like that movie. Like the Page it. Master. I watched that because a buddy of mine watched it. It's fine. It's for kids. You know, read, go to libraries, read and shit. Be a good person. Um, and then I think that's all I did from your voodoo. Uh, Tenacious D was cute. I'm happy he got to make a movie with his friend. Uh, and then Blended. That sucks. Blended fucking sucks. It's pretty bad, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I know I just said about a bunch of mean things. I did watch Wonka on your video. Uh, <laughs> I will recommend a movie. Oh, I did Batman Under the Red Hood, and I really like that. I really like all those usually, but this one especially, the story is really ripe. Uh, oh, and then uh, Maze Runner, The Scorched Trials. Uh, I've watched the original, the first one and the third one in theaters, but I never watched the second one. And rewatching it now, I'm like, did I even like the original? Because this sucks. I fell asleep watching the original and don't even know if I actually watched the second one. So I could not even participate in a conversation about those movies. Well, I remember liking the Death Cure, too. Like, so, like, it's weird that I really hate this. Uh, but uh, last but not least, the last movie I'll, I'll tell you about is I would love to recommend, uh, as seeing as you are, you have puppers. Um, Best in Show is a comedy from the year 2000. It is a um, it's like a like a big uh, cast. Uh, I've heard of it is before, it? but I do not know anything about it. I've just heard the title. Yeah, Christopher Guest directed the actor. Uh, Eugene Levy, Jane Lynch, Bob Balaban, Jennifer Coolidge, they all play big roles. Um, oh, John Michael Higgins, who you'd recognize from like the Pitch Perfect movies. Okay, uh, yeah. But it's basically like all these different types of people. Kind of might be like Rat Race, but like all these different types of people are all trying to come to this dog show and win. And they're all different walks of life. You have, you have your normal like heterosexual couple. There's a gay couple. There's a lesbian couple. There's a... You know, uh, what's it called? There's a different type of heterosexual couple. There's like single people that are in there and they're all vastly different personalities and like situations, uh, you know, and just seeing and it does help that I now have the dog. But I was like relating to a lot of it and just being like, yep, that's kind of what it's like. And it was very funny. It, it was hilarious movie. So I heavily recommend uh, I, I almost gave it five stars. I fucking loved uh, Best in Show. It's 90 minutes flat. Hell yeah. So. It's on my voodoo. It's in that uh, 2000s collection that okay. I just bought. So check it out. I will yeah, definitely you, do that. Have you seen anything from my voodoo lately? I have not. I, I was looking today because I was actually. So I just bought on my voodoo today. I checked to see if you had ants because you don't. So I, I went don't. and bought it on my own. And okay. <laughs> I was going to buy it singularly, but there was a double pack. So speaking of Jerry Seinfeld, I actually got the B movie oh! too, which I have never seen actually. So. What? What? Yeah, never saw it. So this will be a new one for me soon. <laughs> yeah, the B movie is like great. I was like seven when it came out. Yeah. Uh, so that I'm biased, but it is like you've heard people quote that movie. Like you've heard like you like jazz. Yeah. Uh, so there, there's some like really great bits in there. So um, definitely watch that movie. That hilarious. John Goodman's great in it. Really funny. Didn't movie. even know he was in it. <laughs> Yeah, he, he plays this like lawyer. There's so many bits that so you're gonna watch and be like, "Yeah, I've seen that before, actually." You know, like Ray Liotta and stuff. Like, like you, you've, you, you're aware. You yeah, I, I, mean? I, I scrolled through the cast just a little bit, and I was like, "Holy shit!" There are so many people in this movie that I had no idea participated. 
Yeah, it's it's really funny. Um, I've added the Scream trilogy. I bought um, I bought them all on uh, it was oh, yeah. Blu-ray recently, so I'm really happy about that. Uh, and then yeah, this 2000s collection, and then the Stoner collection. Uh, I bought those as well. They were both on sale. Like, there's some good sales, man. Yeah, I think. What else did I just get yesterday? I gotta remember. Oh, um, the original hairspray. Never saw it. The John Waters one from like the seventies. I have it in this like I have a giant purple like uh, twenty musicals of the old old time, and it's Warner Brothers, I think, and it's in there. I've seen the the remake. I haven't seen that either. Mm, so yeah, I'll check that out then. Uh, that sounds good. Yeah, and then I got a racer head and. Yeah, I saw that. Dead Man too, or whatever it was called. But I, I've seen a racer head, but I I like fell asleep watching it, so I need to rewatch it. But yeah, mm-hmm. I haven't seen this other one either. Dead Man. That's uh, I think it's Jim Jarmusch or whatever. Yeah, a... Jim Jarmusch. I know him. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Then actually, I might you've sold me now actually because I I saw it. I was like, what the fuck is that? I'm moving on. Yeah. But I I know the director, so I'll probably check it out. I. I had to uh, redo because it deleted one of your lists on my letter on your voodoo. The Adam needs to watch this list because I was trying to rank them and it deleted everything. And now I fixed it and I moved all of the priority over to the first list and all the like secondary stuff is on the second one. So, but I'm, I'm getting through them. I mean, how many do you hear me just name that I watched in like two weeks? I've been watching, you've been burning through them. I definitely need to catch up on yours. And honestly, my own, because I've been watching a lot of stuff that haven't actually been, I've been buying stuff that haven't been watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, coming up for me, I know the Warriors, I want to do Dracula Untold, Sisters, uh, Pee Wee Herman, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, whatever You've never seen Pee Wee's Big Adventure? I'm a Tim, bad person. Tim Burton's directorial debut. A lot of fun. And I've seen like 15 of his movies. He's like my fourth most watched director. So it definitely put it up there. It's one of those I'm like, I got to save it for a good time, you know, and I don't know why I do that. But <laughs> uh, the yeah, Underworld movies, I want to do those as well. It's been a um, long time since I've watched those. I hear they're all terrible. Same thing with the Resident Evil, but, you know, yeah, homework. they've. They've definitely probably dated. I used to really enjoy them, but that was 10 years ago. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but movies are fantastic and awesome. Is there any other movies we wanted to bring up before we wrap up? Uh, nope. I'm actually seeing the only one that's caught up coming for me that I can think of is I bought a ticket for If this Thursday. So it'll probably be mm. the next movie I see in theaters. But what else is actually out this weekend? I can't remember. Back to Black, the Amy Winehouse movie, and then The Strangers yep. Chapter 1. I definitely will see The Strangers, because I'm definitely more of a fan than the average person, I would say. I liked the first one a bit more, especially a bit more than you, I would say. But I hate both of them. <laughs> I, I, like I really, I thought the sequel was better than a lot of people give it credit for. I think it's like a fun, it definitely feels more like an 80s like slasher almost to me. Mm. There's but a scene at the pool where they play Total Eclipse of the Heart. Yes. I love that song. That is one of the best scenes in horror, honestly, for me in the last few years, just how they shot it and everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I can't, can't stand either of those. So I'll <laughs> see the new one. You know, why? Oh, because you were home. Like, I don't get any. I'm sorry. I'm so mad. I hate those movies so much. And I won't probably, I might not even see the Back to Black, but I'll be seeing If, I'll be seeing Furiosa. So next time we talk, we'll definitely be talking about those two. Uh, I have plenty of reviews up. I just finished one for Sasquatch Sunset. I think I also have one for the fall guy that I did recently. Challengers, that one's doing pretty well for me, but I have plenty of reviews. Mine is uh, hard reviews. That's my little sign there. Hello, Adam Ryan Donato. I talk about movies and I edit it together all nicely and neatly. And you can find that in the description, Steve. Uh, definitely follow me on Letterbox if you want to see what I'm watching lately because I haven't made a video in quite some time other than Kung Fu Panda 4, I think, was my last one. But mm-hmm. I kind of think I want to make one for Late Night with the Devil just to give it a little bit more exposure and whatnot and give it more positive exposure anyway. And I'm definitely thinking I'm going to start making them more often here soon, hopefully. So keep an eye out on that channel and you might see something cool. Well, summer blockbuster season is upon us. We'll have plenty more updates for our ass anticipation game. Head out to the theaters, guys, and thank you so much for watching this video. 
Yeah, stay frosty.